This is the Berman Method podcast featuring Dr. Jake Berman and physician assistant Jenny Berman. We are here to treat problems and not symptoms. Disclaimer, this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and not to treat anyone or to give medical advice. If you are interested in any information that we are giving and would like to use this for yourself, we recommend that you contact your primary care physician or reach out to us and ask us questions about yourself specifically. Enjoy. Okay, I think we're working this time. <laughs> <laughs> the Berman Method Podcast, where we are focusing on treating problems, not symptoms. Dr. Jake Berman here with... Jenny Berman, physician assistant. My lovely wife, <laughs> and we're laughing right now because we're recording video. I told you guys we're going to get some video to go at this one of these days, and here we're doing it right now. I love it. So if you guys did not know, but Jenny loves the video. She loves being on camera. You can see her I face love right it. now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I hate it. I absolutely <laughs> hate being on video. It's the worst thing ever for me. Oh, my gosh. We're just like 100% opposite. What do you mean by that? You love the camera, love attention, love being loud, even me? though you're actually an introvert. I am an introvert. Just love it. Love it. <laughs> Not me. Well, I talked about this a little bit on my podcast two or three ago when I was talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm -hmm. where he was my idol growing up and I wanted to be a movie star, a bodybuilder movie star. And then when Jim Carrey came out, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be a comedian bodybuilder movie star. I want to be a combination of Jim Carrey and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And so then, I love the camera. And then what happened? You're not a bodybuilder. Or a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just... Jacko Berman. <laughs> Just Jacko B. Magatsu, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I am going to stop recording. I'm glad it is actually recording this time. And we're going to keep going with the podcast. Deal. I'm good with it. Well, <laughs> say bye-bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> cool. So we are talking about arthritis today, specifically osteoarthritis, and even more specifically, bone on bone. And to use very explicit examples, we're going to use knee bone on bone. Because I cannot tell you, we cannot go at, we never go more than a week without somebody calling up and saying, my knee is bone on bone. The surgeon says I need to have a knee replacement. I don't know why I'm calling you right now because there's nothing you can do, but I just figured I'd give it my one last chance before I agreed to go under the knife. Nothing you can do. Nothing. Mm. But so, then. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all doom and gloom. So I know I've talked about this at least once, if not twice on the podcast back in the day, whenever that day was. However, I want to talk about it again because there's in the past probably three weeks, I've been getting a lot of calls. I don't know why it is. You know, it seems like things come in waves where prior to two or three weeks ago, we've been getting a lot of shoulder pain and rotator cuff people calling up saying, They've got shoulder issues, but over the past couple of weeks, it's been really about knee pain and people saying they've got bone on bone and needing a knee replacement. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about it and talk about how I came up with my philosophy of does bone on bone matter? But if it's bone on bone, there's nothing you can do. Maybe. Huh. <laughs> All right, so tell me more. Okay, so this essentially is coming down to using x-rays and MRIs and whatever kind of special tests that you utilize out there as a tool to guide treatment, not a tool to prescribe treatment. Said differently, just because your x-ray says so-and-so, doesn't mean that that prescribes the plan of care. Okay. We want to use an x-ray as a tool to help guide 
treatment, not prescribed treatment. So let's go back to the example that I love giving to make things make more sense where when I was up in Jacksonville working with Aaron, I was working with this gentleman that just had a knee replacement. And anybody that's had a knee replacement knows that the first week is usually the worst week. And because it's just so excruciatingly painful. I mean, things have come a long way in the past couple of years, but it's still not fun. So as I'm working on this guy in the first week, he's going, man, I'm really not looking forward to having the other knee done. So for this example, we're going to say he just got his right knee replaced. And he's like, I'm really not looking forward to having the left knee replaced. So I asked him, I said, why are you having the left knee replaced? And he said, well, on x-ray, the left knee was worse than the right knee. The left knee is completely bone on bone, but the right knee was killing me. So that's why we decided to replace the right knee first. So after he said that, I didn't really understand it all at once, but it made me really step back and think about it and say, wait a second. This guy just said that the x-ray said that his left knee was completely bone on bone. No cartilage left, 100% bone on bone. But it didn't hurt. Hmm. His right knee that had some cartilage left that was not 100% bone on bone was excruciating. Mm -hmm. And that's why they decided to replace the right knee first. So it's not the bone on bone causing the pain. That's what I'm saying. Generally speaking. Because this is not a one-time occurrence. This has happened multiple, multiple times over the course of my career where the knees bone on bone, the hips bone on bone, the spine is bone on bone, mm -hmm. DJD or degenerative disc disease or whatever you want to call it. The fact that it's bone on bone does not necessarily mean that that is what's causing the pain response. And this is a perfect example. This guy's left knee was 100% bone on bone, but it had no pain at all. His right knee was excruciating. So can we take a pause and can we explain what cartilage is? Like, what, what do you mean when you say his right knee had some cartilage left? What should that tell you? So any joint in the body has cartilage that is essentially the buffer between your bones so when two bones come together, the bones are not meeting each other directly. They're meeting each other indirectly. So the cartilage is a buffer. Mm -hmm. So you could imagine a thick piece of plastic or polymer on the end of your bone to, to protect the bone because the bone is bone, right? The bone will grind and it, it's not supposed to be, it's... I guess another analogy would be you never have two pieces of metal grinding against each other. There's always some type of bearing or polymer between them. There's got to be something between them because metal rubbing on metal degenerates, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the cartilage is what separates your bones. It's a padding. And that's what gets worn down over the years of inefficient muscle usage is the cartilage gets worn down to where it's essentially gone, and then that's what leads to the bone on bone. And cartilage doesn't have blood supply, so it can't regenerate. Correct. So once you break it down, it's just gone. Correct. Right. And cartilage breaking down isn't painful. Correct. Right. And then what causes cartilage to break down? Aging or... <laughs> The years of football or the heavy weight lifting, you know, because these are all the things we hear people say, right? I played football for 20 years, so I have no cartilage left, but I, that's not necessarily. Yeah, I absolutely love it because there are people that played football their entire life who do have cartilage left. So what's the difference between people that do play football their entire life and do have cartilage left? I'm assuming Tom Brady would be a great example. I'd love to take some x-rays of his knees mm -hmm. and see what his knees look like at 43 or 44, whatever he is, and then take x-rays of Cam Newton would be a great one because he's 
he is not efficient at all. So whenever he turns... Sorry, Cam, if you're listening. <laughs> he is... Uh, whenever he turns 43 or 44, I'd love to take x-rays of his knees and then compare them to Tom's. But on the other side, playing devil's advocate, is you can have somebody with no cartilage in their knees that don't doesn't have pain, right? So maybe Tom Brady doesn't have cartilage, but he doesn't have pain because his muscles are more efficient. Yeah. So just, yeah. Yeah. Because, we'll, you know, this is a totally different topic, but we'll have people come tell us and tell us their back hurts because they have no disc left. But... 90% of the population at their age don't have disc left, but don't have back pain, may not have back pain. So let's do a better statistic because this is a real statistic where 60% of the people over the age of 40 shows something on their MRI about degenerated disc, herniated disc, bulging disc. But not 60% have back pain. This was this study was specifically for asymptomatic people, meaning okay. that they looked at thousands of people that had no pain at all mm -hmm. over the age of 40, 40 and older, and took an MRI of them. And 60% of them had some type of herniation, bulging, degeneration, yet they had no pain. So we're saying the same thing. I just wanted to give... A oh, yes. very scientific, you can go out and you can search this, this yourself and look at a systematic review of this study. So this is, this is real. This is not just talk. So to recap, the x-ray, the MRI is showing, showing things, but it doesn't always correlate with the pain you're having, number one. And number two, cartilage breakdown is going to be from a lack of muscle efficiency. Yeah, let's let's finish that one up real quick okay. where so cartilage gets broken down because there's too much stresses placed on a, a joint. This could be any joint in the whole body, but we're going to keep using the knee for example. So just because you played football, just because you exercised aggressively, you lifted a lot of weight in your early days or early years doesn't mean that that is the reason why your cartilage broke down. Because you played football and because you lifted heavy weight without using the proper form, without using the right muscle activation, that's what caused the joints to take the stress. The whole purpose of muscles in your body is to alleviate stress on joints. That's the number one reason why muscles are present in your body, is to alleviate stress on joints. So if you've got stress on joints, that means you ain't got the right muscles working. It's that simple. It's very, very simple. Got it. Got it. Okay. So coming so back. That starts the cartilage breakdown. Got it. Okay. Yep. Now going back. So coming back full circle to this example of, because I know that there's going to be some people listening to this right now. Well, my surgeon says I need a knee replacement or my x-ray says this. So this isn't true. This is, this is not true at all. My knee's killing me. So let's pretend like this guy that I was using this example of, let's pretend like his left knee is killing him and his x-ray says it's bone on bone. The first thing that I do with anybody that has knee pain and thinks that they need a knee replacement is see if I can push it completely straight. So if, this, if, if they're laying flat on the table, can I get the knee completely straight pain free? If I can get the knee completely straight, pain-free, the chances for needing a knee replacement dramatically diminish. Why is that? Because the efficient position of the knee is straight, meaning that when it's slightly bent, there's increased compressive forces on the knee joint mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. So when we're walking... We bend our knee to take a step, but then we straighten it to push off. Yep. And if, if we can't get it straight on the push off, then it's putting more force. Yeah, it's, it's not so much the push off as it is the landing. So when you go to mm. land your next step, Got it. You really want to have a straighter knee than a benter knee mm -hmm. because that's where we're increasing the forces onto that joint because it's essentially decelerating the your body weight against gravity. 
So that's where most of the forces are going to occur in the gait cycle is when your heel lands on the ground. If your knee is bent, then there's increased stresses on the knee joint. If your knee is straight, then there's increased stresses on the surrounding musculature because muscles have to be activated to keep it straight unless you're walking with some type of crazy hyperextended walk and that's not relevant. Mm Mm-hmm. So what muscles have to be activated to push the knee straight? So for the people you see that can't get their knee straight, but passively you can, so they can't straighten it, but you can, that means that potentially the right muscles aren't firing for them. The number, let me say it this way, the number one most common thing that I see in all knee pain is the muscles on the front of the leg are stronger than the muscles on the back of the leg. Mm -hmm. So if we want to get even more explicit, we can say the quadriceps are stronger than the glutes, not the hamstrings. Don't even think about the hamstrings here. We're talking about the glutes. So the quadriceps are way more active than the glutes. And if you think about it, that makes sense. Because when the knee is bent, the quads are keeping it from Mm -hmm. bending even farther. So the quads are activated way more. You could stand there with bent knees and not fire your glutes all day long, but your quads got to be firing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So the glutes is the primary muscle that should be activating, but is not activating on people who can't get their knee actively straight. Correct. Absolutely correct. So the number one intervention that we do with all knee pain over the age of 50, you come in for for all non-traumatic knee pain. So if you've got just normal knee or uh, insidious knee pain, meaning there is no trauma, you're over the age of 50, it's just a normal, you're getting older, not normal, just an average thing where you're getting older. The first thing that we do is we push it straight and get it pain-free straight. Once we do that, then we get the glutes firing because then the glutes are going to actively keep it straight versus me passively pushing it straight. Then the glutes need to keep it actively straight. Those two steps are the most common steps that we do with knee pain. And that is the quickest way to get out of knee pain is get it straight and get the glutes firing. And so even if they have no cartilage left, in their knee, if their glutes are activating, then that's decreasing the force that's going through that bone on bone, quote, unquote. Correct. Absolutely correct. So to date, I've been doing this for a while. Don't want to date myself. Been doing this for a while. I've only run into one person in my entire career that I was able to get her knee completely straight, pain-free, completely straight. And she ended up still having a knee replacement. Because of pain with activity? Correct. Every time she went to go do something active again, it started hurting again. And the one thing that this particular person had was hypermobility. Mm. So hypermobility is one of the hardest things that we treat because it requires so much muscle activation. And this lady was at a point in her life where the amount of work that it was gonna take to get the muscles stronger to support that knee was not worth, she wasn't willing to put in the work to do it. Mm-hmm. It was just much easier to have the knee replaced. So to date, she's the only person that I've ever worked with in my whole entire career that we were able to get her knee completely pain-free straight and she still ended up having a knee replacement. So have you seen people who have come to you with the poor x-ray MRI that you can't get their knee straight? Yes. And then that's when you say, okay, you know, we've done everything that we can do, and I agree that you need to go have a knee replacement. Correct. That thing is just so degenerated that I can't jump up and down on it and get it straight. Mm -hmm. So there's not going to be a point in time where you're not in pain. So you can do cortisone, you can do whatever you want to try to prolong the inevitable. But at some point, you're going to have to have that thing chopped off. Speaking of cortisone. Uh Uh-oh. So that'll be the first line of, quote, treatment. 
before going for a knee replacement, they'll do the cortisone injection and see if that helps with reducing the pain. So cortisone is a steroid. It decreases inflammation. It doesn't fix anything. It doesn't bring your cartilage back. It doesn't fix the bone on bone. It doesn't make your muscles stronger. It just simply reduces inflammation for a period of time. Correct? Yeah. So far? Yeah. Cortisone is a perfect example of treating symptoms, not the problem. Right. So what what we want people to understand is that it's reducing the inflammation, but it's not treating what's causing the inflammation. So the inflammation is going to come back if you haven't done anything to change where the inflammation is coming from. Correct. So the only time that we will typically recommend for somebody to get some type of injection like that with reducing inflammation is that if they are actively seeing us to help treating the problem, so the reason that the inflammation occurs, but the steroid will help with getting the inflammation under control so we can keep it under control. And that's still rare that we would ever recommend that, but... There are some cases. Yeah, I mean, you just have to remember that pain is there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Pain is telling you that there's something going on there. So just because you take the pain away doesn't mean that you fix the reason why the pain was there to begin with. So I hate it. Mm -hmm. I absolutely hate it. I hate injections because people think that they work. And yeah, they work if you if your definition of work is you don't have pain anymore. Right. But it doesn't fix the reason why the pain is there to begin with. Right. It just drives me nuts. Mm-hmm. Absolutely nuts. Right. So we really need to be focusing on why do you have pain in the first place? Is your knee pain because you can't get it actively straight? Is it because your glutes aren't firing? Is it because your pelvis isn't in a good position? There's all sorts of reasons why it could be happening. Yeah. Let's let's not rush to shooting some drugs in there. Right. We got to figure out the problem. Figure out the problem. Treat the problem, not the symptom. (sighs) Yeah. Cool. Does that make sense? Got it. So we use the knee in this example. However, the same exact thing is true for the hip. And the shoulder. For the shoulder, for the back. It's all true. Mm Mm-hmm. Shoulders get a little more complicated because there's so much range of motion in the shoulder and there's so many muscles that are active there or part of the equation there. So shoulders are a little bit different and we could do a whole nother podcast on that. We've gotten a lot of shoulder replacements in the past six, eight months for some reason. But the big thing is the most prevalent, the most common thing is bone-on-bone knees, bone-on-bone hips, bone-on-bone spine, lumbar spine. Mm -hmm. Just because the x-ray says that doesn't mean that that is what's causing your pain. Oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't say what was causing the pain. Oh, on your patient in Jacksonville? Yeah. Well, Well, I thought it was because his knee wasn't straight. Well, hold on a second. So... His left knee was completely bone on bone on Mm x-ray. His right knee had cartilage left, but was in excruciating pain, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now everybody pay attention. The left knee was bone on bone because the muscles that support that knee were not working, right? Right. If the muscles in the left leg are not working the muscles in the right leg have to work more. Harder. Uh To compensate for the lack of muscles in the left leg. Right. So this is a perfect example of overworked and underpaid. So because the right leg was so much overworked compared to the left leg, it just got more and more inflamed because they were using it so much more to take the stress Because the muscles were not working on the left leg, something had to keep fighting this guy against gravity, right? Mm -hmm. He was still walking, he was still moving, he was still living. So the right leg was working way harder than the left. And that's what caused the inflammatory response and ultimately the pain response in the right leg. 
So the same is true if we look at it in reverse. Let's take a random, let's take Sally. Sally comes to me with bone on bone. Her left knee is killing her. Her left knee is bone on bone on x-ray. So we have to say, okay, what's going on here? The muscles surrounding the knee are inflamed. So get the glutes firing, get her butt firing to help alleviate the stress on the muscles around her knee so that they can decrease inflammation. Mm -hmm. And then the pain response goes. We didn't do anything about the bone on bone, right. but the pain response goes down. Because of less inflammation. Because of less inflammation. We treated the problem, not the symptom. So that's very important. That's probably the most important thing that we've talked about so far is what was causing the pain. Right. If it's not the bone on bone, what is causing it? It's the soft tissue surrounding the knee. All the tendons and muscles, ligaments even, surrounding the knee, not necessarily the bone on bone. So this... Again, we'll go back to figuring out the problem, though, because you can go get a massage and massage those muscles and areas around the knee, and you'll feel good for an hour, but then that pain's going to come back once the inflammation stimulates again because the muscle activation is still isn't there. I mean, the massage isn't going to fix the muscle activation, so you have to do both. You have to figure out the problem, do the muscle activation, decrease the inflammation. Correct. Good. So I know that there's going to be at least one person listening to this that wants to shoot holes all on this. So please email me, text me, call me and try to call me out, punch holes all in this thing. I would love to talk to you. Whatever I can do to help people avoid the scalpel, I will do it as long as we can maintain a high quality life. Mm -hmm. So we have this conversation with, who are we having it with? Bob right now. Bob is trying to do everything he can to avoid a hip replacement. And I'm going, okay, but your quality of life is now suffering. Mm -hmm. You're not doing the things that you love doing because you're trying to do everything you can to avoid the hip replacement. I'm not about that. And I'm talking, trying my best to talk him into having a hip replacement because it's just not worth it when your quality of life is suffering. But I'm not talking about Bob. I'm talking about everybody else where – we get this pain response gone, your quality of life goes through the roof. Mm -hmm. You don't need it. Right, right. Okay. And it's very patient specific. So you have to be seen and evaluated. And then you guys are honest and figuring out, is this something that's treatable or is it not something? Yep. I tell everybody on the first phone call, if we're having this conversation about a knee replacement, I say, I'm 95% sure that I can give you an honest answer at the end of our first session. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if I can't get your knee completely straight and pain-free completely straight up by the end of the first session, then it's not looking good. Right. That doesn't mean that I'm going to fix your knee pain. I'm just trying to give you a prognosis. I'll give you an answer by the end of the first session, whether or not you need a knee replacement or not. Right. It's right. pretty simple. Good. Like it. That was fun. Thank you for listening, everybody. Pass this podcast along to somebody who is thinking about having a knee replacement. Please send this to them. Let's try to avoid it for as long as possible because we don't want to outlive our knee replacement. That's right. <laughs> that is true. Touche. Okay. Right, cool. cool. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. See ya. Ciao for now. Woo. Thank you for subscribing on your social media and podcast platforms to The Berman Method. Dr. Jake Berman with Berman Physical Therapy and Jenny Berman, Physician Assistant with Berman Health and Wellness. You can find more information on our website, www.bermanpt.com for physical therapy, bermanpt.com forward slash wellness for the health and wellness. You can also find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and on your podcast platform. So be sure to follow us, like us, subscribe to us. And if you would like any further information, definitely visit our website and reach out to us. You may also find our free reports on the websites as well, where you can download this free information for yourself. Have a great day.